In the end, all we are is our story. What is your story and what do you want it to say about your life? I'm Ann C.K. Nickel, a living, walking miracle who is on a mission to transform one million lives, one story at a time. Help me reach my big audacious goal by joining me each week as we discuss all things story. Welcome to the Story Shepherd Podcast. Hello, everyone. It's a new, beautiful day. This is Anne C.K. Nickel, the Story Shepherd, living life on the upside and sending blessings to you all for a wonderful new week full of possibilities. On today's show, I welcome Raul Marin. Raul is known as the Wise Wolf, and he is an award-winning motivational speaker, poet, author, and podcast host. He also has 19 years of experience in adult education and as a private event DJ. Welcome, Raul. Thank you for being my guest today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. Poet to poet. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yeah. and as a fellow author and poet, I am very excited having you here for that. But you're also doing a lot of other great things. So please tell us more about you and share some of your story. Well, I'll start from the beginning, as they say. It wasn't too long ago where I could sort of where I could have said on a day like today, but uh it was very <laughs> recently, uh January 12th was my 40th birthday. So I was born. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm still celebrating, by the way. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> I say, you know, celebrate your birthday for a month, especially when it's a milestone birthday. Uh, exactly. The way it looks, uh, for me, being the 40th. But uh, January 12th, 1984, born and raised in Silver Spring, Maryland. I am the only son of four. I'm also a kidney donor. Uh, nine years ago this year, I donated my kidney to my mother. And she is still the Wonder Woman that I know her to be. And uh, and I'm here thriving as well, uh, being a, a poet and author and educator and now motivational speaker as well. And I'm, I'm hungry to continue to just inspire everybody that I connect with because I feel like that's what God brought me here to do. Oh, that is amazing. I love that. And I know uh, it takes courage to do something like that. Thank goodness you did that for your mother. And I'm glad she's still doing well. Oh, um, she's, she's doing fantastic. Probably even better than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So so you've been in education for a long time. Yes. So when did you realize you had a passion for that? But then how did you transition from that into speaking and writing? I've had quite a few crossroads moments in my life and it all started in college when I you know I had this 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 three-tier vision or dream played out or planned mm-hmm. I said to myself I'm going to rock with this theater performance program because initially you know my dream my vision was to be an actor oh, I love wow. I love the stage I love having the microphone not to be the center of attention, but to to just use it as an instrument to communicate, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never been shy of you know stage fright or 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 acting or I think I mean if if I were to be given a role now, I'll I'll jump out of the I'll I'll jump out of the computer and do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just love I love theater, and so I when I initially at the college that I now work at as well. I I registered to be a theater performance student. And so I did it. I did I, I studied theater for a year. I absolutely loved it. In fact, I always say, or, or if you could start tomorrow and 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 take one college course, even if you're stage fright, I would say take an acting class. And then of course life happens. You know, I was fortunate that I didn't have parents who said who raised me with that mentality of, oh, you need to be a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer because, you know, they make good money. You know, they're they're secure and like 
I, they didn't raise me like that. They were more from the uh, the approach of, you know, where you're our son, we love you, we're going to support anything you choose to do. But of course, when, when things happen, they're going to give you that pep talk. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's not it's not moving the chains for you. And so I had to pivot. The next thing that I was passionate about, or just as passionate about acting was was music. Not so much as an in, as playing it because I have no musical talents in, in terms of playing instruments. But I said, you know, the one thing that's always playing all playing in, in my house is music. The one time that the, the, that there's silence is when we go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I've always just always loved music and I said, you know, what better than to be on the radio? And, you know, have music be a part of my life. And so I transitioned to radio broadcasting. And then I I, I lived one of my crossroad moments. Um, so, so all of that was the story behind the story. On the last semester of, of, of majoring in radio broadcasting, you had the opportunity to be a DJ on the college's online radio station. The very first show, we had to go to our instructor's office and get feedback. So I did my show, and, and you know that feeling that when you're hearing somebody give you so many compliments, but yet you know that there's a butt coming somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you're just waiting for it. <laughs> I was saying all of these wonderful things like, oh, Raul, you killed it, you rocked it, you know, the energy and the flow, and I, I could just feel it coming. And then, and then finally it came, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. But here's what I need you to do for me. For the next for the next show, I need you to Americanize your name. What? That's exactly what I said. I said, "What?" He's like, "You understand me?" I said, "I'm not, I'm not professor. I'm sorry, I don't." I need you to Americanize your name. It's it's just gonna fit better with our listeners. Mind you, this is two thousand three. So barely 21 years ago, which is which really doesn't seem too far away. And again, I I even though he repeated it, I was like, I just I I I was a vegetable. Like I just did not know what to say or what to think or how to react. And he goes, Well, it's okay. You know, it's it's okay if you don't have an answer right now. Uh, we can figure it out when you come back to class. And so I come back to class and he goes, So Raul, uh, did you come up with an Americanized name? And I said, no, 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 professor, I'm sorry, I, I did not. And so here's what he did. He said, okay, class, uh, if everybody can grab a piece of paper. He literally wrote three names on the board, two of which I don't remember to this day. I just remember the one name that stuck because that was the name that everybody in the class voted for me to be my American name. Oh, wow. <laughs> he was Chris Martin. Chris Martin. Okay. <laughs> that was my Americanized radio name. Throughout the remainder of the semester, I had to consciously remind myself when I turned on that microphone, just as I see yours right now. Mm -hmm. Listening to E-Radio, WMCR. This is Chris Martin saying, hello, Chris Martin. I had to, Chris Martin, Chris Martin, Chris Martin. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, that's just hard in this day and age. I can't imagine something like that happening now. And what's wrong with who you are? I mean, we're all unique individuals. We all have our own way of doing things. We all have those experiences, everything behind us. That floors me, as you can tell. <laughs> I would have been so upset with that. How did you get through the rest of that class without being upset at every class or even getting on the radio doing something you enjoy but not getting to be yourself that's mm -hmm. hard to overcome it's hard to overcome and it and it was the whole semester but i just i just kept anchoring myself on the fact that i was born to do this you can't teach and you can't coach you know something that just seems like a natural gift like of course you can I mean, you can take a class or a course and really have at it, but eh, <laughs> it might yeah. not work for you versus somebody that's just like, you know, like it's just a gift 
that it just flows from you. And I just felt like every time I was in that studio, like I was flowing. Like I was, time was irrelevant to me. Like there wasn't a care I had in the world. Like I was in my element, you know, taking song requests and doing the weather and like, hey, coming up after the break, we got Maroon 5, we got Bruno Mars and so much more on your video. Like, like I was having a blast. <laughs> That's amazing. And Thank I said you. to myself, you know, as much as they want to label me or call me or whatever it is, however, you know, people can describe it, you know, Chris Martin, I know who I am. And I said, regardless of how I approach this mentally, I know that when I leave, I'm going to have the experience that I need to get ready for what the world has for me once I graduate, which in, in, in hindsight, you know, it, it, that was an obstacle that I had to overcome to have the, to build the, the confidence to go after what I really wanted. Because even though it was a struggle for me at first to find radio work and it eventually it just never happened. It did lead me to, to start and continue uh, to this day, a very successful career being a DJ for private events. That's awesome. Well, it's great. I mean, you found a way to take what you learned, you know, yep. to finish the class, which was, to me, takes a lot of bravery and courage with what you had to deal with. But it was smart, too. I mean, you were smart to finish and then take what you learned and use it to your advantage. So kudos to you. I think that's awesome that you're able to do that. Some people wouldn't have been able to finish and get through that. So it's wonderful that you did. And I'm glad you did. I'm so glad. I, I, I pat myself on the back every time you know, I see a microphone because it reminds me of, you know, that, you know, that it's, it's always those pain points that at the end of the day, they, they really do make you stronger. They do. They really do. And it's tough when you're going through them but they always say hindsight's twenty twenty, and you so if, you, if you can survive it and then look back on it, you see how much you learn from that experience, even if it was rough. It yes. you know, it makes you who you are today. Yes. So that's awesome. So we're talking about challenges. So was yeah. that what the biggest challenge you went through, or what other challenges have you had to go through to get where you are? What a few. <laughs> well, that's, what do you think is the biggest challenge that you had to go was, through? That was one peak of Everest that I that I <laughs> climbed to the peak of. Shortly after that, my focus went to okay. So now I'm in the university, I'm not going to focus on radio broadcasting because there wasn't an option. And I said to myself, well, the one thing I also do very well is is writing. I could write in my sleep. You know, that's always been. Again, we talk about gift, something that you do effortlessly. Mm -hmm. Writing has always been that for me. I said to myself, well, I think uh, I think I'd like to give journalism a try. Journalism at the University of Maryland is a very, very competitive program to get into. Um, did I say very competitive? <laughs> <laughs> very, mean, very competitive. Yes. Very competitive. Two year. They give you two year. They give you two semesters to get in. And unfortunately, I I didn't do it. Hmm. And when I talked to my counselor about it, he said, uh, well, let's backtrack a, a minute here. Why, why did you want to pursue journalism in the first place? And I told him, I said, I love writing. And he said, well, have you ever thought about literature? I said, honestly, no, but it does sound intriguing. Am I going to do a lot of writing there? He's like, <laughs> you're going to have countless nights of writing, if, if I can be honest with you. And I said, well, if that's the case, count me in. And so he, he told me a few options that, that, that there were. And then ultimately, I decided to do Spanish Latin American literature, not Spanish from Spain, but Latin America. Mm -hmm. I did that program in Spanish. And I did that for a reason, because even though I was born here, my mom and dad are from El Salvador. They, my mom raised me with an iron fist in terms of language because she said, I never, ever, ever want you to forget your roots. You can, out, out, in the, out in the street, you can talk Chinese, French, German, Italian, I don't care what it is. You can speak those languages out there. But when you're here, you're going to speak Spanish. 
So ultimately, you get to a certain point when you're acquiring language where you have to uh, level up. Mm -hmm. So doing that program in Spanish was my opportunity to level up with my Spanish, because nowadays I can tell you, like, it is just such a blessing to be a, a bilingual professional. Oh, I'm sure it is. It comes in handy everywhere now. Personally, professionally, socially, any Lee, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a blessing. And uh, it was it was while I was taking those literature classes that I had my other aha moment. And my favorite educator of all time, and I remember every single one of my teachers, mm -hmm. this professor, he blew me away with this one thing that he said. And mind you, this is a college professor. He okay. said, and maybe the, you can, re maybe you, you remember your teachers, but this was the one teacher that ever said that I had ever heard say, I really, I honestly don't care what grade you get in my class because I mean, it's a formality. I have to give you a letter grade, but it really doesn't matter to me if you get an A, a B, a D. What really matters to me is what you learn, because if you haven't learned something, then obviously I haven't taught you. It's like, wow. From that moment, like I was floored. I was it like, makes you want to learn more when you have a teacher like more. that. I invited him to a Starbucks because there was a Starbucks in the, ca in the cafe. So we had plenty of Starbucks coffee chats with that professor. Bonding as professor student that I just realized how much I love connecting with, I mean, and you can call it student because of course I was in academia when, when I started to really, when that really started to sink in for me, but education for me is just connecting with people. You don't have to have a degree to feel educated. You can talk to somebody that's sitting at the bus stop with you who may not have a degree, but they could be the wisest person in the world. If you give them an opportunity to talk to you or or you take the initiative to talk to them. Exactly. That's why I love everything about story and sharing stories, because you learn so much from other people, other cultures when they share their stories and when you share yours with them. So, you know, really quick from that experience, I learned that it's like, I love connecting with people. I love hearing their stories, learning from them, because the biggest difference to me is between teacher and student is not, you know, where they are in the, in the classroom. It's, it's how they apply. And I just realized this, that, you know, I live in an area where there are so many people and to this day, there still are. They've come to this country because they want a better future, not just for their families, but for themselves. Because unfortunately, back home doesn't have a bright future to offer them. It starts with language. The biggest hurdles that they've had to overcome are just language alone. They have, and they're, and these are educated, very professionally experienced people that have been doctors, lawyers, engineers, uh, psychologists. But language has just been their biggest obstacle to continue in that, on that path. And I said, because I love connecting with people, I said, I think this is this is my niche. I wanna I wanna be in a classroom where I can inspire adults who just like me had a dream of, even though it wasn't a dream fulfilled, I've still kind of fumbled my way, so to speak, to be where I am, which is still a success. Oh, it is. Yes. In their eyes as well. Mm -hmm. So if, if I can fumble through life and be in a place of empowerment, because I know that you're dealing with that same struggle, feeling like you can't, that you can't achieve that bright future that you envisioned when you arrived here because language mm -hmm. can overcome that language barrier and so much more, but you got to work at it. And that's awesome. And that's what they, I think, really do need. I've met some people who came here who were doctors and lawyers and engineers in you know, their home country. And because of that barrier and getting started, you see them working at a grocery store. You know, you see them doing all these other things to get by until they can get past that barrier. And so it's nice that there are people like you who connect with them, who teach them and encourage them to move past that or to get past that. That's awesome. 
that that was that was peak number two of Everest. <laughs> <laughs> but here's um, I think this one is the biggest challenge of all. It wasn't until three years ago. I was 37 at the time. And I heard the words that from my own mother that I don't think anybody that's going to listen to this afterwards wants to hear from their mother, which is, <laughs> Anne, I want to talk to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, ne I never liked those words. No, <laughs> I don't like those words. I mean, <laughs> especially when people text you, it's like, when you have a chance, can you call me? It's mm. like, you tell me what the conversation's about. Like, <laughs> like you just start to think the worst, right? But, but especially with the tone and the way that she's, I want to talk to you. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, boy. And so hitting rewind on my life, you know, one of the things that I just kept hearing time and time again growing up was, you know, where's your girlfriend? When are we going to meet her? Where's the girlfriend? You know, every holiday was the same question. And pretty much my default answer was, well, I haven't found the right one yet. I guess that was my subconscious mind, you know, speaking for me. But in reality, I needed this really tough conversation with my mom to really discover why I was saying that answer. She told me was, I don't think that the problem lies in this thing that you've been saying all these years that you haven't met the right one. I think the common denominator here is that there is a problem that lies within you that you need to fix. I don't know what that is, but I think that the, the, the problem lies in you because I don't think it's a coincidence that you can, one day you meet, you know, Sarah, and then I'll never hear about Sarah again. And then you go out with Anna, maybe one or two times, and then, then I'll never hear about Anna again. And then you go out with Vanessa. And the story repeats and repeats and repeats. There is a problem that lies within you, and you need to fix it. That's hard to hear from your mother. My goodness, Mom, can you? <laughs> <laughs> can you put oh. the knife in a little more <laughs> and twist it? <laughs> you know, you know, oh, my goodness. Can you not pierce my heart so aggressively? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's tough yeah. but again in hindsight i needed that because for the first time in my life and if you're listening to this you could you you might be you might resonate and i hope if there's anything that you take away from this it, it's this where the first maybe it's the first time maybe it's the thousandth time when you see yourself in the mirror what do you think what do you feel because for the first time in my life at 37 I realized, like, I had not learned how to love myself. And that is one of the most important things in the world, is loving yourself. But it's hard. It is so hard sometimes. Yeah. Because we can be our best friend and our toughest critic at the same time. <laughs> yes. Yes, we can. Yeah. And that's hard for a lot of us. It really is. And it, and it was hard for me for years and years and years of my life. You know, this this expectation that because I'm a good guy, that I'm not a bad guy in terms of being this machista, egotistical, you know, cocky, arrogant. You don't, you can't, anybody that knows me well does not use those words to describe me. But even though I, I knew that I'm not that person, I can't expect the people to love me if I don't even love me. And she saw it. She's like, you have to fix that problem. I can't fix it for you. Okay, so how did you fix it? So I, I have a, a great friend, a mutual friend that we both know, Jose Escobar. He, I've known him for 30 years, more or less. But I didn't know the entrepreneurial man that he is up until right around that same time that my mom had that conversation with me that I needed to fix what was inside of me. And he had reached out to me after, you know, we had years of disconnect. Like I knew him, but we weren't like that close. And he reached out to me and he said, you know, um, I'm, I'm about to offer this program. I'm, I'm not offering it to anybody, just anybody. 
I'm offering it to people that I think could really benefit from it. And you strike me as a go-getter kind of guy. You really strike me as somebody that this program could really benefit. And I want to know if you want in. You don't have to pay for it. But it's going to require your commitment and your perseverance and your consistency and your faith. Because this is going to be a 66-day challenge of mind, body, spirit. And up until that point, I had not done it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And 60 days doesn't sound like a long time in some cases, but 60 days on a challenge like that, when you are exploring all of those things, that can be tough. That can be very tough. And I'm telling you, there were plenty of nights where I felt like I wanted to throw in the towel. That what right. am I doing? Like, this is hard. My goodness. But I'm telling you, that's that that really allowed me to just stay on this course of you have to be a leader for you, regardless of what you do in life or what position you have in a job, if you have a job or even as an entrepreneur, we have to lead ourselves and we have to be invested in our growth because, I mean, we all have flaws. The, my strength could be your flaw. And your strength could be my flaw. Like none of us is ever like completely, oh, we got this. There's nothing that I can do or need to do to further develop my game. Like I, I got all my I, check, 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 check. <laughs> no, it's, it's an no. ongoing journey for all of us. I it's, believe. It's an ongoing journey. I mean, we're always, you know, one of the, in fact, speaking of mountains and Everest, <laughs> one of my favorite inspiring quotes is the top of one mountain that you reach is the bottom of the next. Oh boy. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> and it's, it's a little overwhelming to think about it that way, but it's true. <laughs> and, and I think that the reason why whoever quoted, whoever made that quote, I think they're brilliant. Because, you know, it all starts yeah. with that with that little thought in your head, that, that little voice that can be yet so small, but yet so powerful, that tries to convince you that this next task that you have to do that feels like a mountain for you, it wasn't it, it wasn't that big before because I mean you you just did XYZ. So why does this now feel like a mountain for you when it's like just just keep going? Exactly. Yeah, look what you've already done. Look what you've already proved to yourself. So just do it again. Just do it again. Yep. It's but, all yeah. in your face. That's okay. Get up, dust it off. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a coach who says that failure will always feel better than regret. Oh my goodness. A thousand times. Yes. And I when I heard her say that the first time, I thought, you know what? She's right. You know, if you never try, then you'll never succeed. And if you do fail along the way, get up and try again. Like you said, brush yourself off and try it again. Because there's no true failure unless until you give up. That's the only true failure, in my opinion. It is. The the day you say quit, there's there's no there's nothing that we can do, anybody else can do to talk you out of it. If, nope. if, if you made that decision in your mind, game over. Exactly. Yep. It's up to you. It's up to you. And Aunt, we were just talking about this. And that was actually one of the questions I was going to ask was bringing that up is that we all deal with that doubt and that fear mm -hmm. and sometimes the imposter syndrome, that mm -hmm. little voice in our head telling us you're not good enough. You know, mm -hmm. you'll never be able to do this and someone else will do it better. So what do you do now when those little doubts creep in? I've made it a habit, a routine, because here's the thing about routines. They're not repetitive. It sounds, it sounds repetitive to say I have a routine, but it's really to have a routine is consistent intentionality to really make the most of every single day. As the fact is, we... You know, we're, we're sitting here on having an amazing conversation that's filling my cup. And when our conversation's over, we're not going to get it back. We'll never get it back. And that, and I think that accounts for everything. Podcast, uh, the, the, this project that, you, that you've been 
you know, imposter syndrome delaying mm -hmm. <laughs> so long or this, you know, really sensitive but difficult and necessary talk that you have to have with your kids or with your spouse or even with yourself. And so it's like it's never going to be perfect. And I just remind myself every single day now since that that aha moments with my mom and Jose that introduced me to that challenge of mind, body, spirit, that I have to intentionally wake up every single day with gratitude because hell or high water, when, regardless of what happens, I'm still here. And that's a miracle in and of itself. That can give you more of a boost than caffeine would ever will. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I still have that rush of, I need my coffee, but it motivates me, it inspires me, it encourages me to, even when those little thoughts do come into my head, and they will, and they'll come into yours too, to not do it because you're not good enough, or you're not smart enough, or you're not fast enough, that you have to remind yourself that, look how far you've come. You owe it to yourself to keep doing this, even if it's not perfect. Who says it's perfect? Because it is. Nothing is perfect, really, in the world. Nothing is going to be perfect. And people say it all the time, whether you, whatever you say or don't say it or act, people are always going to have something to say. Do it for you. <laughs> yes, you're doing it for you. No one else. No one else. And if you can't love yourself first, and if you can't do something like that, follow a dream for yourself, then how can you expect to anyone else to love you or anyone else to be inspired by you and your story if you can't? have the courage to follow your own dreams. That's right. You brought up gratitude and mindset. Those two things to me, I believe are vital to a creating a beautiful life story. Besides those two, what is one other thing you would say is vital to building that beautiful life? It's hard for me to define my favorite book because I just have so many. But one of the, my favorite, favorite books is Better Than Good by Zig Ziglar. I love Zig. Absolutely phenomenal book. And so many of us who may not be on this personal growth journey, we could I think it's easy to assume that the enemy of good is evil or bad. But no, enemy of good is great. It's like we can often beat ourselves up so many times. Oh, well, I'm, I'm good this or I'm just good that. There's so much more to you than what you're letting out. It's better than good. It's it's great. And imagine how you how you stand, how you speak, that the, the body posture and the body language, how it attracts people because you just you you live it. And I'm, I'm I'm not good. I'm not just average. I'm I am great. I love it. I am great. So I think uh, to your point, you know, gratitude, mindset, and just embodying that pursuit of greatness and the positivity of it the positivity of it you know even if you're beating yourself up which is totally not needed still here you're still breathing did you get any complaints about it no it's like <laughs> <laughs> then you're doing awesome <laughs> doing awesome yeah i always like to tell people that one that if you are still here then you have time to do great things and if you're still here and you've survived all these different things, you're doing great, better than what you give yourself credit for sometimes. And I think so many people get caught up in that because they're not yet where they want to be. They do. They tear themselves down and they forget how great they truly are. And they forget to look at all the things they've already accomplished. And truly, that is amazing in itself. Getting through life most days for some people is amazing in itself. And if you can tell yourself that and then every day just make one more little improvement, then you're doing great. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just one little step every day. Every day. Every I day. I, I honestly believe that those are the two biggest forces on earth that we just don't practice enough of. Love and gratitude. Yes. Two very, very important things. Very important things, because it all starts with that self-love that we've talked about. Time is just so precious. We already know that we can't get it back. 
you know, I had such an, I had an amazing experience this past weekend, just connecting with men, like a, a men empowerment group. The, the takeaway that I took from it was you have to have a board of directors in your life. What it really means is, do you have those people in your life that you just love, cherish dearly? Because no matter what, you can make that phone call, you can send that text, you can FaceTime them, or for those that are not Apple users, um, you can video call them, Zoom them, or in the morning if it's necessary, to say, like, can you just hear me out? I just need you to hear me out. That's important. And how much lighter you feel knowing that, I mean, yes, we have to do a lot of things by ourselves, but we don't have to. When yep, you have exactly. around you that you can know, love, and trust to say, hey, and could you mind helping me with this? Because I think I, I, I've been following you for a while. You have an amazing podcast. What do you think about this idea? And how much better you feel just because we, you had the courage to ask you for some help. You do. You feel better. But I think you also may not realize how good you make the other person feel because they feel honored that you reached out to them mm -hmm. and you asked for that help. It puts them on a, a higher level at that moment. It makes them feel good knowing that someone trusts them enough and loves them enough to reach out for that help. So truly you're helping yourself and you're helping someone else. Yes. It's all about connection. And as a former introvert <laughs> and <laughs> still somewhat introverted, because, you know, writers, a lot of times we are, we like to be in our little space and, you know, to create, but you still need that connection. You, you still do. need to be around people, especially as you said, I like that, that term, your board of directors, the mm -hmm. people in your life who matter and you know that they'll love you no matter what. And no they'll what. be there for you no matter what. That's yeah. important to have. There's no judgment. There's no, you know, bullying or anything. It's just they have your back. Yes. You could, you could do that whole, all right, I'm going to close my eyes. And you're fighting. Oh, do I let go? Do I not? <laughs> let go. They've just, got your back. <laughs> you know, let go. We, we can catch you. We're right here. <laughs> We're right here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it is, it's an awesome feeling to know you have that. Yep. Yep. And so to anyone out there who feels they don't have that, I believe, uh, you know, what would you suggest? I would just say, do your best to find those people. I would say that it's, it's also okay to be vulnerable. Yes. Be I think vulnerable. a lot of us are afraid of that. And so many of us are afraid to just speak our story because we're afraid of what the response is going to be and how surprised we're and shocked we're going to be when it is so healing for the person that hears you out for the first time. Yes. And and they, and they tell you, it's like, wow, not only am I, like you said, not only am I honored that you trusted me to say this to me, but my goodness, you need to get on more stages and podcasts to tell your story. As, that's why I started this podcast, because I believe in sharing your story, because there are so many people in the world I believe, who need that, who may feel like they're alone until they hear that story. And yeah. you may not connect with everybody in the world, but there are some people, there's a group out there, as we like to say, your tribe, that when those people hear your story, it changes their lives. Yes. And if you don't share, if you don't have that vulnerable moment and share your story, you may never help those people who need to hear it. So, yes, it's it's wonderful. It's scary <laughs> and it does take courage, but yes. it can do amazing things when you get past that fear and past that doubt and share with someone. Yes, I'd say be vulnerable. It can bring so much peace and healing. There's a statistic that said uh, that I heard at a, at a at an event. Eighty percent of humanity feels that they have a book to share with the world, but how much of that eighty percent actually does it? I didn't want to throw out numbers because I was just absolutely intrigued by what the number is. It gives me goosebumps to say that, at least at that event two years ago, the answer was one percent. How sad is that? That's very sad. 
80% and only 1% have the courage to do it. Oh, you know, who wants to hear my story? It's the same thing that Anne talked about and Raul talked about. But no, that's your story. We all have a different experience. It may sound similar, but we each handle it a different way. Yes. We each learn something different from it. And that experience can help someone else learn from it. So maybe with us doing this, it'll encourage other people to get out and share their story. I hope so. Either written or orally, but you got to get your story out there. Yes, you have to. Need it. So tell me now, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? I'm going to say it, it's, it's twofold because it comes from my mom and dad. From my mom, it's it's a mantra. I think it goes like this. I think I can. I know I can. And I will. I love it. Very simple, but very powerful. If you firmly believe it. <laughs> yes, you have to believe it. Or say it enough until you believe it. You have to believe it. Because I know that there's critics out there that, just, that they will say, well, well, affirmations, eh. You can write them. You can read them. It's not doing anything for my life. But do you truly believe? Do you truly trust in the words that you're saying? And, you know, for those that then, you know, I'm, I'm a Catholic, but this goes for believer or non-believer. It's one thing to love God, and it's another thing to trust in him. So true. There's a big difference there. And a lot of us talk about how much we love God, but then it, we want to have control about the things that we do, but it's not, it's not up to us. And because there's that lack of trust, we struggle and we hit our face time and time and time again. Like that, uh, like that lesson, life is going to repeat lessons to you very loudly until you get it. <laughs> <laughs> and it will. <laughs> it's all happening. We're say. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. How many like, times do you have to be knocked in the head before you get it? <laughs> <laughs> so she and she made me realize that. You know, like, I don't want you to just repeat it for me. It's like because well, it's not for me. I want you to believe it in your heart. I think I can. I know I can. And I will. I used to have this mentality that everything was hard. I can't do this math problem. It, it's, uh, math sucks. Science sucks. Yeah, when am I ever going to use this? <laughs> when am I ever going to use this? Like, my goodness. I can't get a date with you know, knowing the periodic table. Which, so, yeah, that, that mantra was very powerful. I, I think I can. I know I can. And I will. And from my dad's side, he would always, he would, and he still does to this day, do your best. Or don't do it. That's a good one, too. Do your best or don't do it. Well, like you said before, we only have so much time. And so if you're going to spend time on something, you're right. You might as well do your best at it. And here's the thing that we can often overlook. If you're especially if you're listening and you're a parent. So here's, you know, here's here's your cup that you're functioning at today. Sometimes you are a full cup. And sometimes all you have to give today is 10%. All you have in you, Anne, is 10% today. But that 10% that you give is 100% to your kids. It's going to mean 100% to them. Because you're giving of whatever you have. And when you're doing that, it overflows their cup, which then in turn fills your cup back up. Because they're going to, and it's going to reciprocate because they've gotten your what is a 10 but feels like a hundred, they can bring it back to you. And he's he's always lived with that mentality. Do it, do you know, do it, give it your best or or, or don't do it because he's like, I don't like to, to do things halfway. He's like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna be all in. Of course, that's that's when he's ready to do it. That's where my mom and dad will clash. My mom will say, like, I want it now. And he'll say, well, okay, I'll, of course I'll do it. But maybe, you know, 30 minutes or an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> when when I'm able to do my best, then I'll when do it. Do my best. <laughs> then you'll get my best. How about uh, five minutes? Yeah. Yep. I want it now. 
And so what is one last piece of advice you would give the audience to help them transform their life stories? Your next best friend from whenever you listen to this podcast forward is a journal. I love that. That is your next best friend. Love that. Journaling is so helpful. It's just so helpful. And just really appreciate your me time because there is nothing feminine or masculine about it. We all need me time. We do. And I, and I know that people can have limiting beliefs about journaling because it's like, oh, I hate writing. I'm going to get bored after a sentence. I know the non-writers don't like it, but you can't look at it at, with that approach. And nobody likes to go to the doctor either. That is your time to fill your cup because you're not going to get another time to do it that's going to cost you money, energy, or anything because it's you're, you're in your space. I, I would challenge you to do it outside. That's a great idea. Just just be in nature and journal. And And a second way to think about it, which I did with my mom before she passed, I gave her a journal. And she, she loved writing too and reading, but she still had trouble initially with the journaling. And so I told her, I said, well, it's think of it this way. It can be for you, but it can also be for your kids. It can be a way to pass on all of these things about you that can help the next generation that will leave your legacy. And so if you, I think you look at it that way too, it's your me time. It helps you, but it also can be a help to the next generation. If, if, you, if you're intentional about doing it every single day, you can see the difference in, you, in, how, in your outlook with it, your yes. perspectives, your gratitude, you know, day one to like day seven. Just in seven days, you can see the impact of journaling. Especially if you start um, what I do with mine, I start with gratitude. Yep. You know, I'll journal about anything, but I'll start with just at least one thing that I'm grateful for that day. And yep. I think anyone, no matter what your situation, you can be grateful for having a roof over your head. You had a bed to sleep in the night before, that you had a warm cup of coffee this morning. I mean, any little thing, and then you'll see how that gratitude expands and grows, as you said, as you go through. It's amazing what a difference it can make huge you'll just never be the same again in fact you'll be more hungry to do to continue uh that that routine which is why again it routine is not repetitive it's it's consistent intentionality john maxwell says it best he's like how easy it is for us to to talk a talk but how difficult it is for us to live it consistently that's true I'll be doing it consistently because that's where we will beat ourselves up we have this streak going on that's just, you know, impeccable. 14 days in a row. Oh, but day 15, you stumbled. And now you're just beating yourself up for it. And you're like, what a loser I am. I'm not going back to. Nope, I'm just going to stay here and give up. And that's the only failure. And there's a lot of us that are going to reach our arm, reach our hand to you to, to lift you up too. Again, know who your board of directors are, because your board of directors will should hold you accountable. Yep, hold you accountable and support you when you need it. Yes. So you don't That's have to awesome. Work. Well, thank you for sharing that, for all of that. That was amazing. And of course, I know you also have a book out, a poetry book. Yes. yes and yes. so um, how can our audience find you so they can learn more about you? And they can check out that amazing poetry book. Yes, it's um, if you go to raultepoet.com, you will have uh, access to get uh, the link to that book. And very soon, the, the next book that I've been so graciously and happy uh, to write again, because I feel like once you're once you embrace that poet in you, it's just, writing is just what you do. <laughs> I love it. Yes. For well, another fellow poet. Yep. Love it. It's it's so true. <laughs> it's just what you do. <laughs> yep. So well, the poet.com is where you can learn about uh, the poetry in my life uh, or, or what I'm doing with it. 
and uh, public speaking and and of course I have a poetry membership that I'm going to be starting uh, very soon because I I think this is my calling. But there's a reason why my heart just burns with gratitude with poetry because it's just it just flows out of me. And I feel like okay, it that that's that's like my 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 word for this year is dive. I'm and why is dive? I'm diving deep into making poetry my life. I love it. You know what? Because why not? <laughs> exactly. Why not? And as why your not? dad said, if you're going to do something, do Either your best. Yeah. So why not dive yeah. in? <laughs> so I'm gonna dive in. Raulthepoet.com is where you can see uh, all of the great things I'm working on. And of course, there's social media uh, where you will see my smiling face on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram uh, with, with my name, Raul. And who knew that my name means Wolf Council? Oh, I love that. That's perfect. So that's how I came up with the name. I said, Wolf Council is great, but that's not going to be my pen name. I'm looking for a pen name, but Wolf Council is not quite doing it. But I like the wolf part. And I said to myself, well, Council... Council sounds or reminds me of counselor. A counselor is a very wise person. And, and so, so I had that light bulb aha moment. Wolf counselor, no, wolf wise, no. Let's let's swap the two. And there we go. Wise wolf was born. And I have not looked back since. I love it. And you got to choose it. You didn't have someone else calling you something like Chris Martin. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is no, you, no, no. all awesome. you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can tell that professor to kick it. You are Roe Marin, the wise wolf. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And yes, I will add those links to the episode notes so anyone can go check it out. So please do go check out Raul's site and check out that wonderful book of his. And thank you again for coming on here and being my honored guest. I really, really appreciate you being here today. Thank you for, for creating this platform for, to, for folks to connect with you. This is what it's all about. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I also appreciate you sharing your story and your wisdom. I hope that that helps all the listeners someone gets their aha moment from hearing your story. I certainly hope so because the 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 one thing I want you to go to sleep with is a is a very cup, a very full cup. <laughs> yes. Let's all work on that. Yes. So thank you again. And thank you to my amazing audience for joining us today on the Story Shepherd podcast. Keep creating your epic life story movie. And please join me next time as we continue transforming lives one story at a time.